Have you heard that Intel is shaking things up big time? And we're talking a complete branding overhaul, the biggest shakeup in 15 years. And that's not all. Intel's upcoming Meteor Lake CPUs are set to be game changers. With a brand new Ultra series, groundbreaking AI capabilities, and improved graphics. Stay tuned as we look at Intel's next generation tech revolution. Plus, Microsoft Teams is about to make note taking a whole lot easier, and Edge gets a really useful new feature. Hi, my name is Russell Smith, and I'm editorial director of Petri.com, and this is This Week in IT. So, let's talk about the new branding of the upcoming Meteor Lake CPUs. So this is the biggest change in the naming conventions of Intel's processors in the last 15 years. And this upcoming technology is considered also to be a major turning point in the production process. So the first thing is that Intel is dropping the i from the Core series. So at the moment we have Core i3, i5, i7 and i9, and the i is simply disappearing. And in addition, Intel is creating two sets of Meteor Lake CPUs. So there'll be a mainstream line of processors, Core 3, 5 and 7, and there'll be a more advanced set called Core 5, 7 and 9. Now, at the moment, we don't actually know what the real differences are going to be between the mainstream cores and the core ultras. We'll have to wait and see what Intel announces. The Meteor Lake CPUs are going to use Intel's four process node. Now, what that really means is we've got basically more density on the chip. So the current CPUs are 10 nanometer and this new series are going to be 7 nanometer. Now, I'm not going to go over the entire history of why that's taken Intel so long, but it's been a really long time coming as other manufacturers have been able to push ahead. But it's finally here with Meteor Lake CPUs, which we should start seeing in devices later this year. Now, of course, with that, we're going to get improved power efficiency, better graphics performance, improved processing performance. But what's really important here is that we're getting AI capabilities built into the chipset for the first time. Now, that's quite common in AMD chipsets at the moment, whether it's for phones or for PCs, uh, so even Windows and Mac, we have that at the moment. But this is the first time, at least as far as I'm aware, that we're getting this AI capability with mainstream Intel PCs as part of the package. And of course, as we go forwards with the release of Windows 12, which is expected in 2024, and even the AI capabilities that Microsoft is promising to add to Windows 11 in the 23H2 release due this fall, it's going to be really important that we're able to do some of that processing in a more efficient way locally. Because at the moment, if we just use the GPU or the CPU, that's all very well, but it's not very efficient and it uses a lot of power. So it's really important that we have all of that AI stuff now integrated into Intel's chip packages. Intel is also changing some of the things that it does with labeling. So you probably noticed that some PCs are labeled Intel Evo or vPro. Now the vPro PCs are designed for business so they're easier to manage security and the overall management story. And with Meteor Lake, Intel is introducing two new labels, so vPro Enterprise and vPro Essentials. And we're still not quite sure exactly how the features are going to be split between these two labels, but I assume that one is going to be more for larger enterprises and one more for small business. Intel is also going to be evolving its Intel Intel Evo label, which targets consumers and prosumers. Again, we don't really know the details of how that's going to pan out at the moment, but expect to see some changes to PCs that are branded with Evo. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the performance improves in these new devices with Meteor Lake CPUs. Of course, Intel has a lot of competition at the moment with Mac because of the M1, M2 chips, and it just can't compete in that field at the moment. So we'll see, especially, of course, in terms of power efficiency. So we'll see how all of this pans out. You know, I would be really surprised if we see any major gains in terms of power efficiency compared to AMD chips. But who knows? Let's wait and see what happens. So Microsoft released version 114 of its Edge browser earlier this month. And there's one really useful, I think, new feature in this, and it's called Microsoft Edge Workspaces. 
Now, it's really simple, the idea. What it allows you to do is basically gather a series of links together in a kind of tab group, if you like, and label it as a workspace, and then to share that set of links with your colleagues. Now, this feature can be managed by the IT admins in your company, so they can manage rolling this out to you know users and the links that get you know grouped together or users can basically create these workspaces themselves and then invite other people to work with it now while this idea sounds really simple it's it's really kind of quite useful because very often in order to complete a particular task we have to work across several web applications or information that's held in particular websites. And all of those links, they might get sent in Teams, chat messages or via email. And just trying to bring them all together and keep them in one place while you're working on something is, you know, a really simple but great idea. I've even used it myself recently to uh, do some work on the new Petri website. And it just really helped me to navigate all the different sites that we were using, all the different information, just keep it all in one place. And I was really impressed with how easy it is to set up and how that works. Now, there are a couple of limitations, the main one being that in order to see workspaces, you need to be signed into the Edge browser using an Azure AD account. So it's not available to everybody else at this stage. Teams is also getting a great new feature that's just gone into preview. Your IT admins will need to enable it so that you can use it. But it's called Collaborative Meeting Notes and it's enabled by Microsoft Loop. So what this is, it's basically a loop component that allows you to collaborate on meeting notes as part of a Teams meeting. Now, as it stands at the moment, you would have to basically either collaborate on notes in the Teams meeting chat or use another application to do that. Now, there are some limitations with this. So you won't be able to do this in one on one meetings or meetings that haven't been scheduled with this feature enabled in advance. It also doesn't support guest users or meetings that are established in Teams channels at this stage. It's going to be made hopefully generally available in August, but it is in preview now if you want to enable that for your users. I think this is a great feature, really harnessing the power of Microsoft Loop. And you know, hopefully we'll see more of this Loop stuff and capabilities coming into Teams shortly. A couple of things that I wanted to tell you quickly about Petri. Petri.com has just undergone a complete site redesign that went live at the end of last week. It's been redesigned with the user in mind to hopefully make it just a better experience, something that looks a bit more fresh and modern. So please do go and check that out. If you're not already registered for this week's conference, then please go over to Petri. I'll put a link in the video description below. We've got a one day virtual conference on threat detection and operation resilience and there's a whole load of great speakers lined up. We've got also a round table with the guys from the Microsoft Security Insights show and we'll be talking about how AI is affecting security. So that's going to be a really interesting conversation. We've also got a host of experts talking about various things including protecting your endpoints with Microsoft Defender, automating alerts in Sentinel, using Azure Backup to protect your environments, five ways to help you move to a zero trust security model, and tips for protecting your environment and recovering from ransomware attacks. If you'd like to find out more about the new Teams client, which is currently in preview, then check out the video you can see on the screen now. But that's it from me for this week, and I'll see you next time.